Those were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. A lot of people have seized on this translation that is not accorded correct scholarship. It is only those who trust in riches. That's not what that verse in true exegesis means. It means exactly what the New International Version says. How hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. There's no qualifier to it. Whether you are poor or rich, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. Because some other place you will say, only those who do the will of my father. So if somebody is rich and does the will of God, he's going to heaven. If somebody is poor and doesn't do the will of God, he's going to hell. Period. So now, look at it. That's what the New King James Version has been doing all the years. People who use it and go, oh, no, 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 we're not trusting our riches. No. Poor man will enter hell. Rich man will enter hell. Poor man will enter heaven. Rich man will enter heaven. That's not the point. Let's look at other translations. The New Living Translation says, this amazed them. But Jesus said again, dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. And the New Revised Standard Version says, and the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. There are no qualifiers. Poor man, poor woman, rich man, rich woman can enter, go to hell or heaven. The qualifier is not what you have. It is whom are you serving? Whom are you serving? Who is your first love? If your poverty is your first love, because some people may love poverty. And then that's the problem. So I want you to take something from here today. That the Lord is saying it is difficult to enter the kingdom of God. If you accept that premise, it becomes very easy for you and I to continue. Next scripture, please. Luke chapter 12, verses 15 to 23. Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Then, turning to his disciples, Jesus said, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear for life is more than food and your body more than clothing praise the lord verse 15 the lord said beware to you to me god against every kind of greed the poor man can be greedy the rich man can be greedy the rich man may not be greedy and a poor woman may not be greedy. Life is not measured by how much you own, whether poor or rich or in between. Note that. Beware. Guard against every kind of greed. Because when you are greedy, you expose yourself to all sorts of temptations and harm and hurt. The Lord told us in verse 22, do not worry about everyday life. Don't spend time bemoaning your poverty. And don't spend time admiring your riches. What is important is what? Verse 21. 
having a rich relationship with God. That's the key. Poor or rich, I'm between. Do you have a rich relationship with God? How can you have a rich relationship with God if you are not studying the scriptures? If you are not devoting yourself to knowing who God is and what he's saying, and you are depending on somebody to tell you who God is, what his word says. When he came in the cool of the garden to have fellowship with Adam, what do you think he was doing? God created you and I for relationship. He doesn't need intermediaries. Stop depending on your church elders and leaders. Go into your closet and read your Bible. Let him speak to you. If you don't have a rich relationship with God, whether poor or rich or in between, you've got a problem. That's what I'm trying to emphasize here. Because except you have a rich relationship with him, you will not find the road to that narrow road. And the Holy Spirit will not be there beckoning, showing you, guiding you every step of the way because you are disobedient. Study to show yourself approved, a workman or woman who is not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because God is pleased with such. That's the problem we have today. In this instant coffee, instant Instagram generation, where everything is, is, a, is a lie. Go and study the Bible. Read it yourself. In whatever language that you speak. That's the only way to build a relationship with God. Not by because you attend church. Or you hear someone. No. When we are telling you as we are encouraging you to go and do exactly that. And when you do you find out what we are telling you is true. We are encouraging you because that's how the Lord enabled us to grow. We also want you to have that relationship with him directly. So that it can also help others have the same relationship. Let's up, please. Matthew chapter 18, verses 3 and 4. Then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn away from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Praise the Lord. Do you know why he said, you didn't? think about children. One year, two year olds, they love hearing stories. They trust the adult who is telling them the story. They're not questioning. Why? Because little children don't understand what it is to be proud. So God is saying you have to be like a little child. You have to be humble. Because if you're not humble, God says I resist the proud. And my grace is only with the humble. Because if you don't have humility, you cannot be teachable. And I will posit, or I will, I, will, I will assert that being unteachable is at the heart of apostasy in Christianity. Both the leaders and the led are unteachable. Young men and women hearing my voice or watching me, you are even worse than my generation. You don't want to be taught you don't want to learn. You don't want to learn. You want it delivered to you on a platter. You follow all these pop stars or whatever they call them these days, I don't know. We call them pop stars in my day. And you want to be like them. Celebrities. Oh, celebrities. You want to be like them? You don't want to walk. You belong to what they call in Africa the Yahoo generation. You want to become rich overnight. True wealth never sprung overnight. God gave you skills to use. If only you can apply yourself to those skills, utilize them, you will be able to make a living for yourself and be able to devote time to studying the scriptures. And not hoping to be given one post somewhere to be a pastor that you didn't train for. And you expect God to speak to you. No. You'll only be reading the Bible that your geo tells you to read the verses so you can use it to tell people. As always about returns. How much you are bringing from the outpost. That's the only way you can keep your job. 
So you begin to employ means and situations that are not biblical. You now have to encourage people to come to your church. Your church, remember, is not Christ's church. Because you refuse to be humble. I have known many of you. I know some of you. And I plead and I pray if you do hear my voice or watch this broadcast. I am saying today, repent. He may have called you to a ministry where you may minister to millions tomorrow. But first, repent. Be humble enough to learn. Try and learn from those who have gone before you, who have experience, and who are not asking anything from you. They want to give you the words of eternal life so you can give it to other people. When you are humble, you will listen and you will learn. That's why the Lord used a child or children to epitomize that attitude we must have in order to learn. Stop thinking you are going to be a geo of your big denomination. Next scripture, please. Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 to 46. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Praise the Lord. This is the key to a right relationship with God. Repeat to yourself, this is the key to a right relationship with God. You are all must be to Him. Your desires must be to Him. The person got the most costly pearl is all for him. All for God's glory, not for your glory. Because nothing compares between this world and heaven. That's why those analogies were made. A pearl of great value. A treasure in a field. Yes. Because he's comparing those things. That's the kingdom of God must be, you must hunger for it. You must have a hunger that lies like no other hunger. Because nothing compares between the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of heaven. You and I have to choose one or the other. You can't straddle, I can't straddle, I can't straddle here and there. It's one or the other. And where your heart is, is exactly the one you have chosen. God didn't promise us worldly prosperity. Tell yourself that God did not promise us worldly prosperity. Say it again. God did not promise me worldly prosperity. Rather, he promised eternal life for those who accepted his invitation and continue to do the things he has commanded up and until the very end of their life on earth. Let me repeat. God didn't promise you and I worldly prosperity. The Lord didn't come from heaven so that you and I will become rich in this world. Those who preach that are, the, are agents of darkness. Rather, he promised you and I eternal life. If we accept his invitation, number one, certain Christ our Lord and Savior, and continue to do the things he has commanded us, which include in the Bible, and be in his presence, having a right relationship with him, up and until the very end of your life and my life on earth. That is God's promise. Anybody else preaching anything else is from the kingdom of the world, which is subset of the kingdom of darkness. It has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Read the last scripture. Romans chapter 2, verse 7. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. Praise the Lord. Please mark this scripture in your Bible. That's what I just summarized before. Romans chapter 2, verse 7. After having accepted, 
You persist in doing good. You seek God's glory, not your glory. You seek God's honor, not your honor. You seek immortality because you know he's God. He will give you eternal life. And nothing shall by any means take it from you. I can assure you of that because he that dwelleth in you is greater than everything in the world. He will see you through. If you can accept this message and accept this message and accept this message, you have no problem. But if you think that wanting prosperity is the way to go so you cannot use it to bless God, you are wasting your time. You are on your way to highway to hell. Next scripture, please. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Praise the Lord. This scripture is always repeated, but we never take time to look at it. I'm not going to spatiate on it today because I've done so in other sermons. But to those who love the world, look at what God is telling you in the next scripture, please. Next scripture, please. Romans chapter 2, verse 8. But he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves.